Now, it won't cure male pattern baldness, but this is as good as a 100cc shot of pure testosterone. Enter the gauntlet. Before you know it, you'll be wearing fitted leather jackets and designer sunglasses, challenging anything and everything to a rev match at the stoplight. It doesn't matter if you're approaching life's gray-haired halfway mark, or just looking to show off your learner's permit with some of daddy's money. This machine radiates confidence. But before these boats were the antisocial, loud, burnout machines begging for every bystander's attention, pony cars were compact coupes aimed squarely at the wallets of the baby boomer generation. And sure, the gauntlet might not have been the first car to coin the term pony car, but it didn't take long for Bravado to own that title. Nor did the gauntlet's mid-sized muscle mania overstay its welcome, opting instead to live fast and die young. And it doesn't get more all-American than this. Cola bottle styling, optional shaker hoods, minimal chrome trim, and eight semi-spherical cylinders of pent-up aggression. This car looks like it could eat your firstborn, and you'd forgive it. Inside, you'll find nothing but the necessities, save for the wood grain, which runs along the gauge cluster, doors, and around the tall gear shift. That's not to say, though, that the gauntlet didn't have options. Bravado is the undefeated champion of mix-and-match packages and trim levels. If you had the money, you could circle all the options you wanted, just like a Christmas catalog. Whether your gauntlet came with a slant 6 or a monstrous 445 block, it handles about as well as its contemporaries. Body roll that'll churn your stomach and suspension stiff enough to projectile launch out a kidney stone. Avoid the speed bumps if you can. And if you've been doing the math, gobs of power plus bare bones handling meant the gauntlet was a prime candidate for hot ring racing. America's own coliseum of gladiatorial combat. Just when things couldn't get any wilder, Bravado tugged on Scheister's sleeve and begged his parents for 20 minutes of playtime with its ballistic missile engineers. Because why bother having the largest warhead capable missiles without first having something worth launching them for? It's not rocket science. This customized gauntlet slaughtered the competition on the track so fiercely that the rulebook had to be rewritten for the next season. Ironically, the gauntlet's road-legal relatives had the complete opposite effect of the dealerships. Turns out giving a car a nose job and a two-story spoiler turns people off. And just before the 1970s could fully dig its talons into the gauntlet with all of its safety regulations and emissions standards, it was axed. Bravado wasn't prepared to water down their prized pony like some sort of bottomless mimosa. So then the gauntlet disappeared. Nearly 40 years of silence. Except that one time with Meibatsu, but that's another story. A lot can change in 40 years. Instead of inhaling lead, the youth absorb microplastics. Struggling to stay above the poverty line in any way you can is called a grind set. And the sissy state made it illegal to kick back and crush a road beer after a shift at the asbestos factory. The gauntlet also tried to change. But instead of taking up meditation and attending court-mandated anger management sessions, it got a turbo-tuned 450 cubic inch V8. It's also one of the best recruitment incentives for the US military. Bravado took one good look at Vapid's retro renaissance and decided it was time for its own. Unlike the Buffalo, the gauntlet attempts to look the part of its predecessor. It came standard with the infamous gauntlet gills, a rising side profile, and the signature slot grill with dual headlights, but with an angular twist. Ironically, the part of the car that comes closest to its original is the inside. The interior is just as primitive as before, minus the wood grain. Similarly, the bulkier gauntlet behaves the same, if not slightly more tail-happy. Nevertheless, this gauntlet does step out of its father's shadow when it comes to exhaust notes. And it's not even close. And now for the gauntlet we all know today. A car so uniquely divisive, there's only two ways of looking at it. You can adore it, or you can tell yourself you hate it. Sure, it's as excessive as an 80s howitzer film, but you wouldn't dare change the channel if it came on cable TV. Uh, cable TV, I'm getting old. Point is, there's a small part in each and every one of us that wants what the gauntlet offers. Is it power? Paternal approval? The jealousy of others? We may never know. In any case, the car carries a lot of weight behind it. No pun intended. Simply put, a dominator plowing through a crowd is considered typical. When a gauntlet does it, it's political. The inside looks like a proper modern interior. An updated infotainment console, passenger and driver climate control, and even one of those awful push starts. 
yet for the life of me, I can't understand why this automatic has a clutch pedal. This new and improved Gauntlet 3.0 also takes cues from its older iterations, and exaggerates upon them. The grill and intakes were widened at the cost of fog lights and inner headlights, body lines have been sharpened, and the taillights now are recessed like the original, and of course, the long overdue return of the shaker hood. But bravado wasn't done just yet. The gauntlet seemed like it needed something more. That something was an unholy concoction of bath salts, anabolic steroids, and pure ethanol. You're looking at what bravado calls the hellfire. The hellfire was built atop three philosophies. Wider, louder, and faster. Making it notorious with street racing takeovers and viral car chase videos. You could pick out those flared fenders from even the grainiest news shopper camera. So the next time you're waiting to go home in a 400 car traffic jam, you can thank the Gauntlet Hellfire and its e-cloud chasing driver for siphoning whatever free time you have left in a day. But the Hellfire isn't just infamous over police APBs. Bravado has also tried to bring the ballistic brick back to the tracks of Hot Ring and Trans American too. Not that it worked out very well, but you have to give them credit for trying to send out the last gauntlet with a bang. Because Bravado's large displacement engines will go out alongside it. We all know how this story ends. The Buffalo EVX is living proof that the future of Bravado's high performance is electric. Whether we embrace or detest the future is irrelevant. The automobile has already begun its leap from carbon to electron. What you're looking at here is the retirement party for one of the very pillars of the American identity. For the days of supercharged shrieks, flames, and belching fumes high into the heavens, all in the name of showing off to thy neighbor, have been numbered. So go out there, give him one last show, and show the HOA just how loud you can truly be.